thanks for talking to us first of all the first question to you question to you is uh, tell us about your journey tell us a bit about your story some excited moment yeah of course so i have been wanting to go to space since i was little and well, i should say young because i'm still a little person <laughs> um but i've been wanting to go to space since i was young and um you know i looked at the traditional ways of going to space and becoming an astronaut joining nasa and that's what i wanted to pursue because that's all there ever was um but unfortunately i have very bad eyesight and you know when i was it was around 2003 2004 when my eyesight went pretty bad um past the requirements for being a nasa astronaut but coincidentally that was the same year that spaceship 1 went to space and returned and won the anasari x prize that was given to the first private company to complete a space flight twice and i saw uh, sir richard branson um announce after the anasari x prize that he was going to start a company called virgin galactic and it was going to open space up for everyone and i remember seeing that when i was still a student and saying hey there's another way i can fulfill my dream and go to space i want to work for virgin galactic and i'll go to space with virgin galactic um i didn't know it was actually going to come true in the way it did <laughs> but i'm very happy <laughs> what are the challenges you faced while in this journey uh, something that comes to your mind as as a big challenge or as an impediment uh, to your this journey So I I mean I think the biggest challenge was that I didn't fit the mold of the traditional astronaut um in terms of the requirements and um what it's taught me is that there's not just one way to do things it was a very as a lesson I should have learned earlier but but I'm glad I learned um that there's there's not just one traditional method um you can create your own path um you can find innovative ways to reach a goal that hadn't been done before um so it's just I guess the the challenge there is finding those pathways and you know looking for those opportunities. Okay. And how do you see your journey from here on? What is your vision about your journey from here on after completing this flight? What next? I I'm really excited to be at Virgin Galactic and at in a position where I can help so many more people go to space. I truly believe that this journey will change people's perception um and help energize um you know people to reach for whatever drives them and especially in my role I'm able to work with the scientific community to fly research technologies even education payloads to space to drive innovation and even inspire the next generation so I'm so excited to be able to do that in my line of work what brings you to india and how are you uh, going to uh, maybe inspire people from india to take up such journeys or such challenges So actually I came to India to visit my grandparents. <laughs> um I love uh coming to India because it really is a gathering place for all of our family and we we return as much as we can um and we come from all over the world. Um it's always great to have a meeting place um that's so close to our heart. Um so that's why you know I I came for this trip but I'm so excited to speak to um startups, uh students, um researchers and possibly even future customers about the possibilities of space flight. And I see this as an opportunity for um the private sector to work with government and the scientific community to further each individual objective. And how do you see the uh, overall scope of for space tourism will be Uh, so you taking some flight but nowadays many many startups are there they are all getting into space tourism business though space has been a more or less uh, controlled by government how do you see this shift happening and second any of these security or safety issues have you did you experience while you were on flight yeah so i mean government actually has been a great enabler um particularly when the commercial space industry was starting out you had to work with government to create the regulations because they hadn't existed because private sector wasn't um what wasn't the traditional means of accessing space um so it's really creating a lot more opportunities not only for private sector academia and commercial space but also for governments to utilize these uh, capabilities and free up their resources for even more ambitious goals. Um so it's been a really interesting opportunity. I think this is just the beginning. Um seeing multiple vehicles um is a great sign for the market. Um competition is also a great sign for uh the market. Um and it's you can see vehicles um are very diverse. Uh we are an air launched vehicle. You see vertical rockets taking off and landing. 
Um, you're seeing large rockets, small um, human space flight. Some are not human. So seeing that diversity all is creating a very strong ecosystem in the commercial space industry. But cost happens to be one of the, the happens to be one of the impediments. The the high costs. You see, do you, you see the costs coming down and more, more and more people taking space journeys going forward when it becomes a little bit affordable, not as per the standards of billionaires, but as per the standards of millionaires, maybe. Yeah, I mean, so at Virgin Galactic, we're building a fleet and we're looking to get to 400 flight, space flights a year from a spaceport. And as we uh, build more vehicles, build more motherships, increase cadence of flight, we do hope to drive that price down. Um, in the meantime, we're also partnering with organizations like Space for Humanity to provide opportunities to uh, people that wouldn't be able to, wouldn't want to, or be able to buy a ticket at the current price. Um, so we are partnering with those organizations. And also, I also think access to space itself is changing. You've got the tourism access to to space, but also access to space for academia, for the scientific community. Typically, they put together a research experiment and a payload and wait for the next orbital ride <laughs> to station, to the moon or what other destination. But now with commercial space, um, it's much more affordable and uh, able to fly more frequently for their work. Um, so I think that also is a different type of access to space that's changing and it is much more cost effective than alternatives for the scientific community. One of the biggest fears, Suresha, is about safety or security while you are up in space. Uh, because uh, uh, for for normal tourists or maybe other, how how safe or secure is it to take uh, a flight which is to space uh, and that to a tourist touristic flight? So I get asked very uh, quite a lot um, if I was nervous to get <laughs> to to fly to space. Um, I've been with Virgin Galactic since 2015, and safety is the foundation of our company. It's it's ingrained in our culture. Um, our vehicle, unlike many other vehicles is a human spaceflight vehicle. When we're doing flight tests, we might not have customers in the back, but we have two pilots. So safety has always been at the forefront and we proceed to the next step in our program when we're ready, not because we're driven by any external pressures. Um, so it's always been at the forefront. I I mean, I did not feel scared at all. I trusted the team. I know the culture. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's really about that safety, putting it as the foundation. Um, also, we're licensed by the FAA in the U.S. I know a lot of people think that space is some sort of wild, <laughs> wild west, unregulated frontier. That's not the case. Yeah, it's not the case. We are actually licensed by the FAA to launch um, out of uh, Spaceport America. And uh, how is uh, working with uh, Richard Branson? Well, he has launched many businesses first, and he has been successful entrepreneur, businessman as well. Uh, how have you uh, seen him working? Uh, so up close. How, what are your uh, so far experiences with him? Yeah, so Richard is, uh, you know, obviously very, very good at what he does. Um, he is an excellent architect of the human and customer experience. Um, I'm an engineer, so I've learned quite a lot working with him and training with him for the Unity 22 flight. Um, he is truly putting the customer experience at the forefront, creating a journey that starts well before you take off from the runway. Um, and it's clear in all of his companies that he does put that as a priority. Okay, one last question to you. How do you plan to inspire now many more such uh, people, maybe you know, girls uh, from underprivileged communities in India? Because many of them, they don't have access to all these things, but they really dream of uh, going to space. So how do you plan to inspire or making their journeys a bit easier? So I think representation is very important. Uh, you can't really be something you can't see. Uh, it's a mental barrier. Um, it was hard for me until I saw Dr. Kampolnia Chala uh, go to space to really feel like this was something that was attainable. Um, so I really hope that representation, not only in my journey, but in incredible women. Um, Dr. Swati Mohan was on national TV talking like, calling out the Mars rover, <laughs> um, it, it's incredible. Th that, those kinds of stories, those kinds of voices, I think will do so much to inspire the next generation, um, you know, create opportunities that maybe they thought didn't exist or was not, there was not a place for them in that industry um, and to reduce you know, those, that kind of thinking. Um, so I, I definitely think representation is important. Um, one other thing I think is very unique and great about the commercial space industry is that you don't have to be an engineer to be a part of this industry. Um, if 
engineers you're calling, that's amazing. But if you decide that you want to be in business, you can still be a part of the commercial space industry. It, it is, it's required. <laughs> it's not just engineers that build a company. It's the lawyers, it's the communicators, it's people like Mr. Branson, who's thinking about the customer experience that really create a su successful market and a successful industry. All right. Anything you want to like to share from your side? I mean, I'm just, uh, <laughs> hopefully it shows, but I'm just so excited. We're in such an incredible turning point for this industry. We're about to, as Virgin Galactic's about to start commercial space operations. We're going to be flying our customers. We're going to be flying researchers and scientists. Um, it's an area that is close to my heart. I think you know, once we start flying at the, you know, and seeing the cadence of flights, researchers and technologists are going to have such an incredible opportunity to access space at a more frequent basis. And they can build iterative technologies. They can build campaigns. They can fly with their research. These are all capabilities that we hadn't seen before. So I'm really excited to see what comes out of that capability being open to the community. Order, thank you so much for talking to us and giving us this perspective and giving, telling you, uh, us about your journey. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We on now available in your country. Download the app and get all the news on the move.